couple days ago I was driving to the beach. Truck ran just fine for 40 50 minutes with no issues. Approaching beach by a red light, it was time to brake, and when I pushed on the brake pedal, it went completely to the floor. I pulled over and I was not able to reproduce the same issue with brakes. But I did check the brake reservoir. And as you can see, the brake fluid is very dirty. Which means the issue I'm having is the master brake cylinder. My understanding, usually, generally, if brake pedal goes to the floor, more than likely issue is master cylinder, and if brake pedal is very tough, very tough to push it, then it could be the booster. So in this video, we're gonna replace master cylinder. It shouldn't be of a tough job, but Surprisingly, there is no videos with uh, Honda Ridge lines that show how to do this. We don't really need a lot for this job. Most importantly, we'll need a new master cylinder. I'll briefly talk about this. This one I got on Amazon. And initially I tried to find one on rallies, advanced after parts, some are local, because most of the time if you get local, you'll get lifetime warranty. But Advanced and Aurelis, they were about $165, the ones with the reservoir. This one I got on Amazon is $63. I think this one is one year warranty. I'd be worried if it was just some random unknown brand. But this one is uh, Dorman, which is a very well known brand. I'm sure you heard of Dorman before. For $63, I think it's definitely worth going this route. You will also need master cylinder bleeder kit. I bought this on Amazon for about $10-11, and it's also by Dorman. Finally, to make the job a little bit cleaner, I think I got this manual pump, which actually can be used for differential fluid change and a bunch of other fluid changes throughout the cars and trucks. I'm gonna use that to take out the brake fluid. I'm not sure if it's gonna make it cleaner or not, but we'll see. So I'll start by removing this piece and the reason is just to have a better access. I think it can be done even without removing it, but I think that it's not gonna take long time to remove it anyway and to have better access would make the job a little less messy. So to do this, we're gonna remove engine cover. Size is 10 millimeter. I'll unplug this side. Let's see if it's gonna go. Okay. And it's out. So as you can see now, have very clear view. I always use a new one to compare to see what bolts I'll have to remove. So it'll be two lines right here and then two bolts right here. But before we're gonna do that, we're gonna bench bleed this one. I'll leave it on the side for now. Okay, we're gonna find ones that match. Seem like those one that says 91620, it's the best fit. You can hand tighten them. Now we'll get those two hoses. and push them inside the reservoir. Okay, instructions say to hand tighten it, but tight, but hand tighten it. It didn't work. I tried, so I'm gonna use vice grips. 
So I'll first hand tighten it like this and then use wide grips. Obviously don't do it too tight where you'll break the plastic fitting, but it's gonna be tighter. Much tighter than I had before. I'll put those two in. GOT3 fluid. Pretty much almost full. Actually, I'm gonna use this. Kind of a little bit easier than using ratchet. And you have to push it about one inch in. Wait about 15 seconds and then do it again. Let's do it again, one inch. Looking better already. Let's do it again. Slowly depress. It's been three times, I don't see bubbles anymore. I'll do it once more and if there is no bubbles, should be good. Let's try again, I'll do it on this side. I'll hold it on this side so you'll be able to see more. It's actually getting tougher to push. Just like instruction says, after four to five times, You'll see no bubbles and it'll be very tough to push it. it says it cannot be depressed any more than one eighth of an inch and no bubbles, which means it's uh, been bled properly. So let's see again. Let's try again. So instruction says till it cannot be depressed. I can, but it's a lot tougher. So I'm gonna consider that done. So I'm gonna take those lines out. I'm gonna put this in. And I'm gonna close this. So with all one, I'll start by removing the cap. By the way, I put yellow rags under it because the brake fluid could be bad for paint. So that hopefully gonna absorb most of the fluid. So I take this cap off and I'm gonna try to disconnect those plugs. I think it's just simply pull it and it should come off. It's a little bit tough, but it's out. Now I'm gonna use my Vacuum to get some of the brake fluid out. I'm gonna remove the screen as well to have more access to the rest of the fluid. Hopefully you can see how dirty it is. I'm gonna do one more. Just to show you the screen. Look how dirty it is there. So now we have to remove the two brake lines. One here and one's over there. And we're gonna use cross foot with a 3 8 ratchet. Gonna do something on another one. <clears throat> now that it's uh, more loosened, I'm gonna use regular wrench 14 millimeter to loosen it up some more. It's pretty tough to remove it by hand, so you're gonna have to use a wrench for a while.
Okay, it's out, one of them. And let's work on the other one. Okay, that side's off too. I'll move it away. Okay, lines are out. Those two bolts, one over there and one this side at the bottom is 13 millimeter. And the top one is gonna be tougher one. The one at the bottom, I'll just use extension. I should be able to get to it with no issues. This one's a bit tougher. Actually, I think it will work too. Yep, okay. And it looks like that's actually just nuts. Be careful, don't lose them. It's kind of tough to grab one. There's one. Here is the other one. And now finally we can remove this master cylinder. And it looks like this Honda, probably original one, look how dirty it is inside. Didn't put that in a video, but instead of those blitter kit plastic fittings, I just put those that were included with a master cylinder. Now I'm gonna wipe this portion. Now we're gonna put this in. Like this. And I'm gonna hand tighten them with 13 millimeter nuts. Now I'm gonna connect the brake line. Here's my opinion, and everyone's gonna have different opinions. I think there is no need to bleed brakes any further. A little bit of air might get in the lines, but I think it'd be so little. Because right now, if I loosen or take those plugs off, fluid gonna be going through there, very low amount, but it's still flowing. So I don't see how air would actually get stuck there after I did the whole bench blade and stuff. So that's how I'll do it. If you're gonna do the same thing, obviously do it at your own risk. But I think it should be fine. If it's not gonna be fine, I'll make another video or I'll know by end of this video whether it works or not. But I chose to do it this way, so we'll see. So I'll start by connecting the one that's further away. So I'll remove this plastic fitting, plastic plug. Make sure, by the way, whenever you do any of this, make sure the reservoir is always full. If you're gonna go empty, you're gonna have to do everything all over again, the whole bench bleeding. So I take it out, now it's flowing a little bit. Then I'm gonna connect uh, this line and hand tighten that fitting. Now I'm gonna use the wrench to tighten it further. Fluid still coming out, so I can't really see where air would get stuck. Looks good. I'm actually gonna connect the wires now, just because it's kind of in the way. So black on black. Here it's red and green, and here it's green. Okay, let's work on this one. Plastic plug out, we'll put this one in and hand tighten the fitting. Okay. Can I use a 14 millimeter wrench? Make sure though, if it's going tough, this wrench should go very easy. If it's going tough, double check, make sure you're not gonna cross thread in it. By the way, if my method not gonna work, there'll be air in the system. I will make another video or even in this video of how to do it. It should be good. I think I'm not gonna even use cross food because it's, you don't wanna over tighten it. 
just with range should be good enough. I'll take this off. Now all this place, a lot of the places have brake fluid on it. So I'm gonna use brake parts cleaner and spray it all and then wash. I'm gonna also top off the brake fluid. Could use just a bit more. Gonna reinstall this one. And I'm gonna tighten this one, 10 millimeter. Okay, I'm gonna start the truck and see how brakes feel. Let's put cover back on. And that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll give you Amazon affiliate links for the master cylinder, the bleeding kit, the manual pump. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe. Little update. I drove this truck for about two hours. Even though the truck is breaking fine, no issues, I can definitely tell that there is air in the system. I tried to get air out through the brake calipers but it didn't really work might have to do it also through master cylinder so i'm gonna leave it at that and in a bit i'll release another video showing how to get air out using power bleeder and maybe some other tools thanks for watching see you next time